You cannot call yourself a real acupuncturist if you don't master moxibustion techniques. In this video we will explain to you what moxibustion is and we will show you a lot of different types of moxibustion techniques you can use in your practice. Moxibustion refers to various therapeutic techniques in which dried mugwort is burned to produce heat. When mugwort is dried, it produces a punk that is called moxa. Moxa can be used directly or rolled into moxa rolls. The function of moxa are mainly to stimulate acupuncture points, to warm the channels, to move the blood and to tonify. Moxa can be used for musculoskeletal conditions, period pain, chronic respiratory conditions, digestive conditions and all kinds of deficiency patterns and even can be used for boils and abscesses. It is also quite common to use moxibustion for life preservation or yangsheng. Moxibustion is contraindicated in conditions such as infection with fever, yin deficiency pattern with some exceptions, convulsions and extreme exhaustion. It is also contraindicated on the apex of the heart, on large blood vessels, on the genitals and nipples, and on the lower abdomen and lower back in pregnant women. We will now see how to conduct the different moxibustion techniques in the clinic. The first technique will be direct moxibustion. So direct moxibustion is when we use directly the moxacone on the skin and we burn it directly on the skin. So in order to do that, we are going to need some equipment. First, of course, it's our moxa punk and um, then we'll need um, something to light it on. So we have the lighter or we can also use incense as well. Um, we have the moxa, some examples of moxa cones here and uh, we'll have a container to put the ashes and we have this to, to push the moxa cone um, in it. Um, so before we start, let's make sure our patient is comfortable. Um, she can stay in this position for a couple of minutes during the, the, the session. And uh, we'll also have to make sure that the point where uh, we are going to do the moxibustion is uh, fully uncovered. And there is nothing, no cloth or towel or anything else around. So this is all good. Uh, now we're making our moxa cones here. So you, you can just use the, the punk like this and you will press it with your fingers to create um, um, a cone, a shape of a cone. It doesn't have to be perfect. In general it will be around one centimeter in diameter and two centimeters in height. And um, it will depend on the score and also on the type of moxibustion, type of condition um, you are treating. So now we have um, all this ready, I'll just wash my hands and, um, and we can start. Um, generally, uh, you want to have the skin as flat as possible. Uh, if it's not possible to have the skin flat, for example, with stomach 36, uh, you can use a bit of Vaseline to uh, make sure um, the, the moxa cone will stick. In this case, the skin is relatively flat, so we should be fine. Um, let's see. Okay, it can stand well. So I'm going to light it up. Um, I need to make, um, to prepare my patients. Um, so I'm going to light on the moxa cone. So um, after a while you will start to feel some um, heat. So this is completely normal. Uh, once it starts to be too hot, you have to let me know. And I will just remove the moxa cone. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, awesome. Um, so let's go. maybe 20 seconds approximately. Uh, generally when it gets to the bottom third of the cone, it will start to be burning for the, the patient. Um, so when it gets too hot, you just remove the cone directly. So you push it, um, for example, with this spoon uh, in the container. So 
So how does it feel? Is it does it start to be hot at all? Or? It feels a bit warm. A bit warm. Okay, good, good, good. How do you feel now? Yeah, it feels a bit hot now. Is it too hot? Yeah, a little bit. A bit too hot. Okay, so we just remove it and um, so we can just let it uh, extinguish naturally. So generally when we are doing direct moxibustion, we won't um, let the moxacone burn the skin. Um, but there is a technique called blistering moxibustion, which, uh, in which we let actually the moxacone burn completely. And uh, so this will actually stimulate very strongly the acupuncture points. But this also uh, burn the skin, and there might be some blisters. Um, there might be some um, so, some marks um, left after the, the treatment. It's very strong, uh, but also not every patient will be um, will agree with this kind of treatment. Um, so this was our direct moxibustion. The second technique is indirect moxibustion. So indirect moxibustion is when we're using a buffer substance um, between the moxacone and the skin. So the buffer substance can be a ginger, a slice of ginger, or can be garlic, can be salt in general. Uh, today we're going to do a demonstration with uh, ginger moxibustion. So we are using slices of ginger. Um, you can see that the slices of ginger are approximately two to three millimeters thick. Um, so we don't want it to be too thick, otherwise the heat will have trouble to penetrate. And in order to make it easier for the heat to penetrate, we are actually going to use our needle, just um, right here. And we are going to make some holes in the, in the, the ginger slice, so which is five or six, good. Um, and now we are ready, so I will, I'm going to put the um, slice of ginger right in C on CV4 Guanyuan. So again, as any other moxibustion therapy, we need to have the patient ready and comfortable. Uh, we'll need to have our, all our equipment ready right here and also make sure the area is uncovered. So you can see here, my problem is that the towel is way too close to the moxa stick. So I'm just going to put it, slide it down to make sure I have enough, so I have more space now, okay? Um, now I have my moxa cones right here, so I'm going to put the, the cone on, on the slice of ginger and um, I am ready, so I'm going to light it um, and again keep continuously communication with the patients. So Linda, I'm going to now to, lit the, um, to light the um, moxa cone and you will start to feel some heat. If it starts to be too hot or burning, just let me know at any time, okay? okay. take a few seconds um, to burn. Um, what we can do to make sure the heat is continuous is just put directly another, another cone here ready and I will put it here. So this cone is ready when, when that cone will be almost extinguished. Um, I can just light this one up and then the heat can just be continuous. Do you feel any warm feeling at all? Or yeah, it, it feels warm. feels warm. Just let me know if it starts to be too hot, just let me know at any time. So be ready, stay around and um, continue to ask the patient how things are going. If it starts to be too hot, what you can do is just take the slice of ginger with your, with your hands. It's a bit too hot. Okay, so because we have uh, very thin slices, 
I'm just going to remove it and then I can just light on the next one and continue and continue the treatment. So I'll just move it move it around and continue. Okay, so this is indirect moxibustion. Um, you can see it's easier to control compared to our direct moxibustion. It will need a bit more equipment, um, but otherwise it's, um, it can be a very good technique, very practical in the clinic. As we mentioned earlier, it's possible to roll the moxa punk into a stick like this. And this will actually facilitate our job as a moxibustion therapist uh, to make it more practical and simpler, actually. So before you start anything, um, as usual, you will need to have your patient ready in a comfortable position in which uh, the patient can stay uh, at least for, let's say, 20 minutes during the time of the session. Um, then you make sure your equipment is ready and um, at hand available readily. So we have our Moxa stick here. Um, we can light it up with the lighter. We can have um, a container for the ashes, etc. Um, this is very important that you have a, before you light on your stick, you will have a plan in, in place to make sure you can extinguish uh, the Moxa stick at the end of the session. So it, this is very important to remember that. Now we are ready, uh, the patient is ready, the equipment is over here. Uh, I'll wash my hands now and we can start. So in order to avoid using too much oil, what I will do is um, I will use this uh, alcohol soaked cotton and uh, this will give me more time to take my time to light, um, to lead the stick here. Make sure you do it thoroughly. Uh, some people tend to rush a little bit. Um, when you rush and the moxa stick is actually not completely uh, lit on, it may extinguish it naturally. So you will have to do it again. So it's important that the end um, of the stick is lit completely. So we're taking our time, making it right. Good. Okay, it looks pretty good. So you can see that now the, the, the end is completely lit and we can start to do the moxibustion treatment. So what you can do is to put your fingers um, so you will be able to, to check the temperature at all times. It's a very good practice. Um, so Linda, just let me know um, if you start to feel some warmth um, sensation. Um, let me know if it's too hot as well. In general, there are a few techniques you can use. First is the circle techniques. So it's basically having a circular movement around the points. And you have the sparrow pecking technique, which is going up and down like this. So you make sure it's never too hot. How do you feel? Is it too hot? It's warm. It's warm. Okay, good. This is a relatively safe technique. Um, it's very rare to have burns if you're using a moxa stick. Some patients can actually even use it at home if you um, are comfortable with them to do so. So it can be a good option for long-term treatments when the, the patient needs to continue treating at home. It's a bit warm. So we can also do the moxibustion along the channel. 
here it will be the stomach channel. When you're doing that, make sure you don't brush too much. If you do like this, there will be no sensation at all. But if you go slowly like this, can you feel the sensation of warmth yeah. on the channel? Yes, good. We can also see that there is a red halo around the point where we're doing the moxibation. This is actually normal. This will go away after, after the session. But this shows that the stimulation is going on. So this is a very good point. And the skin starts to be a bit hot as well. Um, another thing you have to be careful about will be to remove the ashes um, in an ongoing manner. So we'll have the extinguisher over there and we'll just press the stick around the container to remove the ashes. That's good. Just do it from time to time. Yep, I can show you with this. So with this container, you would just press like this. So don't press too hard, otherwise Will, the, the stick will may fall down. Yep, so we can continue. Is it too hot? It's not unbearable, is it? No, it's bearable. Bearable. Okay, once we are down now, we uh, need to extinguish the moxacone. Um, the best way to do so is to use a moxa, moxa stick extinguisher. Uh, this is specially designed for moxa sticks. So you just put the moxa stick in the cone, in the, in the hole, and it will extinguish it automatically after, after a few seconds. Um, another way to extinguish it will be to use, um, to cut, so actually it's almost <laughs> cut, so it would be to cut the moxa stick here um, to make sure that the, the um, end that is lit on will be um, will fall down. Uh, make sure you have enough space, so don't do it too close to the end, otherwise inside the stick there might still be some moxa burning. Uh, also avoid to use water to extinguish the moxa stick. Um, this will uh, make it very wet, very soaked, so you will have trouble to um, trouble to light it up the next time, so you don't want to waste your material. Um, this is very easy to find in any acupuncture shop, so feel free to get a few ones um, if you want to use moxa stick moxibustion. So here it is. Smoke is definitely the main problem of moxibustion therapy. In order to overcome this problem, we can use a smokeless moxa. So a smokeless moxa is basically a moxa stick, but instead of our normal moxa stick, this is made from charcoal and traditional herbs that are mixed together into a very rigid um, stick like this. We are, so I'm going to show you the difference between the two. Um, first, I'm going to light uh, them on. And um, we're going to see that the first difference between the smokeless cone, uh, smokeless stick, and the uh, normal moxa stick is that it's much easier to light the normal moxa stick, and the smokeless moxa stick will take more time. So 
you can see now the the non smokeless the normal smoke stick is almost completely lit but the smokeless smokes are it's hardly begun to to be in it this is normal it will take a bit longer um, it's not excessively longer it will be just a couple of minutes So you can see that the normal cone is completely ready now. I could start the, the treatment right now, but the smokeless Moxa one will be um, will take more time. So I will show you now. You can also see that the the stick is becoming white um, as it's. Um, lit. All right, so now we're ready. Um, you can also compare. You can also compare the smoke produced by the two cones. So we can see the difference. Um, on this, definitely produces a lot more smoke than the smokeless smokes are here on my left. This will be the major advantage of our smokeless smoke cell. In terms of heat, they produce actually the same heat, so there is no difference in clinical efficacy. Um, another difference, major difference, will be when you extinguish them. Uh, again, we're going to use our moxa extinguisher, so you will realize that um, it's much easier to extinguish. this is actually full so this happens um, you'll have to empty your extinguisher from time to time otherwise you won't be able to to put more box up yeah so here we are and if we wait a few seconds we'll see that the stick, the, the normal stick would be extinguished very quickly. The smokeless moxa stick will take more time. We can also use moxibustion in combination with needling. Uh, in order to do that, we will use very small moxa sticks like this, which are called warm needle sticks. Um, so we have um, the needles ready already in the um, on the skin in the skin of the patient. And generally, you, you need to have larger needles, so it will be at least 0 0.25 millimeters or higher. Uh, otherwise, the needle will bend and there is risks of burns. So it's very easy. Uh, we use our small toothpick like this and um, we uh, create a hole on one side of the moxa stick. So don't penetrate the whole moxa stick, otherwise it may fall down. Um, so once you have done that, there is another trick that is very um, um, useful, is if you have a bit of alcohol, uh, so this, this side of um, the, the stick will just soak it a bit in alcohol and you will see it will be, make it easier to ignite it. So we're going to do two um, rolls today. This is another one, here we are. All right. Now we are ready and um, I'm just going to insert the roll in the needle. So you can use your fingers to, to maintain the needle as you are pressing with the other hand. Okay, so here we are. And you see the um, rolls are inserted and I will just slide it on. Very quick and easy, and um, this really combines the um, advantages of both um, the um, the moxa and um, the needling, and the, the warmth with will actually um, penetrate through the needle uh, inside the tissues. So this is a, a very good technique to use. Um, it will take about ten minutes, five ten minutes um, to burn completely. Um, once this is done, um, you can remove the ashes with this spoon. So we're going to do that later. Right.
So when there is no smoke coming out of the roll, um, you can check if the um, uh, roll is already, already completely extinguished. So you can use your scoop like this, and if like this the moxa coin is coming easily, it means it's completely extinguished. Um, if you're having some trouble, so you see here I'm having some trouble to take it out, it means it's still burning. So don't force, don't push, otherwise you're going to make a mess. Uh, just leave it burning for a few more minutes and then we'll take it out, we'll remove it. So now I'm going to remove the other one. So you see the, the scoop, the moxa scoop is actually a spoon in which there is um, a little hole like this to, to put uh, the needle. So I'm going to remove this now. Here we are, very easy. And then uh, we can continue, we can do it again. We can reiterate the process one or two times uh, during the session. We are now going to talk about moxa boxes. And moxa boxes are really uh, convenient and practical because you don't need to handle um, the, the moxa stick. So you will see here different sizes and different shapes of uh, moxa boxes. So you may use them on different parts of the body. Some are better for the limbs, some are better for the abdomen, some are better for the back, etc. You can ad adjust depending on what you need. Um, so it's, the concept is very simple. It's putting the pieces of moxa sticks inside the box and then we uh, ignite the moxa sticks and then it will create the moxibustion, all right? So let's, let's go on with that. Um, I will put the moxa box directly um, on the lower back of the patient. Oops. And again, I make sure I, the area is uncovered, so it's safe. And now I'm going to light the moxa six inside the box. So you can see the box is made of wood, and inside there is um, an aluminium magnesium coating to protect uh, the box. going to wait until the, the end is completely lit and then we can close the moxa box. So here the, the patient is relatively thin so we don't need a, a very big box. I'm just using our, our moxa box with two sticks. Um, if the patient is larger, you can use this kind of uh, boxes and you will see you can put six different sticks here and you will cover a much larger area. Okay. Now the moxa sticks are already burnt and uh, are burning. Um, we can still keep uh, the cover on um, and you will see that moxa boxes are, are very easy um, to manage um, the, the, the level of heat uh, inside the box because you can actually have some actions. What you can do first will be um, to open or close this uh, cover here and of course if you um, cover it there will be less air inside the box and it will extinguish the moxa sticks. If you open it there will be more airflow going and it will um, create more ignition, more, more um, burning. There is also the little holes on the, on the side, so again the same idea. If you open, if you open it, it will create more airflow, so it will, it will um, burn quicker. Uh, if you close it, it will, um, it will burn slower. So you can adjust that uh, depending on the sensation of um, the patient. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Johan Berling, clinician, lecturer and researcher. This video was produced by Sydney Institute of Traditional Chinese Medicine. 
please check our tutorials and more information on the school in the description below. You can join our community and also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Good practice and take care.